Hi everyone, I'm Sir July, and for this slide set, we will be discussing source and reverse isolation. Isolation refers to measures designed to prevent the spread of infections or potentially infectious microorganisms to health personnel, clients, and visitors. The placement of hospitalized patients in isolation is either done to 1. Protect the immunocompromised patient from others, known as the reverse or protective isolation, or 2. Protect others from the patient's infectious status, known as the source isolation. Source isolation is achieved by nursing the patient in a single room or a negative pressure isolation room or unit with an unsweet toilet. Since the room is in a negative pressure or the pressure inside the room is lower than the outside, following principles of physics, the movement of air would be the air enters the patient's room from the outside. The air is forced suction out of the room and passes through the HEPA filter. The air from the patient's room will not flow to the outside and thus it will protect other people from getting infected. The type of infection precautions required for a patient in source isolation will depend on the mode of transmission of the organism causing the illness. To summarize, since the room pressure is negative, the movement of air would be outside air going to the patient's room and thus it will protect other people. You may have rarely encountered reverse isolation. In fact, in the medical surgical book by Brunner, there was no mention of reverse isolation and there were only three mentions of reverse isolation in the medical surgical book by Lemon and Burke. This may be because limited clinical data do not support their use. In fact, it is not included in the category-specific isolation precautions by the Centers for Disease Control. However, some healthcare institutions continue to practice reverse isolation. It is used in immunocompromised patients who is at risk of acquiring microorganisms from either the environment or from other patients, staff, or visitors. In some centers that use reverse isolation, the healthcare providers and visitors to a patient who is neutropenic wears gowns and gloves, since most of the infections these patients develop are due to organisms that colonizes the patient's own skin and bowel, the validity of such schemes is dubious and limited clinical data do not support their use. Literatures actually vary on reverse isolation in post-transplant patients. In the book Clinical Handbook for Medical Surgical Nursing, Critical Thinking in Patient Care by Lemon, reverse isolation is not necessary unless the neutrophil count is very low or below 500. In the European Society for Blood and Marrow Transplantation, there is no consensus on a specific protective environment, also called reverse isolation for neutropenic patients. When used, patients should be nursed in a single room. Where possible, this room should have an anti-room, positive pressure ventilation, and HEPA-filtered air. Since there is positive pressure in protective or reverse isolation, Using principles of physics, the movement of air would be air from the patient's room going to the outside. This prevents a positively contaminated air from the outside in entering the patient's room. Thus, the person protected in protective isolation is the patient. If an immunocompromised patient has a concurrent communicable disease, source isolation may be required and positive pressure ventilation may be inappropriate. This table summarizes the salient features of both source and protective isolation. In source isolation, the room pressure is negative, therefore the movement of air would be outside air going to the patient's room and thus we are protecting other people from contracting the patient's infection. In protective or reverse isolation, the room pressure is positive and thus the movement of air is air from the patient's room going to the outside, and thus, the person being protected here is the patient himself or herself. Pause this video, gather your thoughts, and when you are ready, let us have a practice test. A patient with tuberculosis is to be placed on A. Source isolation, B. Reverse isolation. You have 5 seconds.
you answered A, source isolation, you are correct. In the above, patient should be placed in a room with A, negative pressure, B, positive pressure. You have 5 seconds. The answer is A, negative pressure. Which of the following is true of reverse isolation? A, also known as protective isolation. B, it protects healthcare workers from infection. C, its use is unanimously supported by research. Or D, none of the above. You have five seconds. The answer is A, it is also known as protective isolation. What is the movement of air in reverse isolation when the door opens? Air from A, outside enters patient's room, or B, patient's room, air flows outside. You have five seconds. The correct answer is B, patient's room, air flows outside. If you got four questions correctly, you did a good job. If not, rewind this video to check your answers. This ends the slide set. Please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Memory Aid Nursing. Thank you.